Have you ever thrown a party and just no one turned up? Well, in this video, I'm gonna look at 20 of the very best party games that you can add to your collection to make sure that your parties are gonna be an ongoing success. Now, party games are so important because they actually bring people together. You're gonna to be fostering those social connections and create just memorable shared experiences. In an era where digital just dominates, this is actually a refreshing opportunity for face-to-face -face interaction, laughter, and teamwork. These will break down social barriers, allowing people of all ages and backgrounds to connect, communicate, and just bond in a playful and interactive environment. Our first lot of games are gonna be social deduction and deduction type games. And I'm starting off with an absolute cracker here. This is The Mind. Now in The Mind, you've got a set of cards numbered one to 100. And your job is just to get those cards in ascending order. Seems so simple. Except as you go around the room, around the table, you don't know what anyone else has and you cannot talk, you cannot communicate. Well, you can do winks and nudges and groans and whatever you want to try and get them in ascending order. You might want to be playing your cards in quick or you might want to be standing back on, mm, I don't want to play. Look, the mind is great fun. And as the levels go up on the first level, you've just got one card each. So simple. When do you get to level 12? It is impossible, the mind. Next up, we have the three to five player trick-taking game inside job. You are spies and you're good spies. You're going out there to do your missions. The problem is one of the, the evil, the bad spies has infiltrated your ranks and they're trying to also win these missions. Now, if you've never played a trick-taking game, it's where you've got a lead suit and you're trying to follow that suit and you're trying to win certain tricks. Now, there's gonna be certain conditions, every single trick that you're trying to meet to try and win that mission. Now, the thing is, if that infiltrator spy wins those missions and wins too much intel, they're gonna win the game and unfortunately, you're not the best spy around. Next up, the three to 10 player, but definitely better at higher player counts, the ultimate trader game, One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Now in One Night Ultimate Werewolf, you are playing as certain hidden characters. Now, there's a whole bunch of characters, a whole bunch of expansions, but look, you'll be playing as a character. Then what's gonna happen is everyone's gonna close their eyes. There'll be some music going around and this voice will say, you know, certain people can open their eyes. Perhaps werewolves open your eyes and you look around the room and you're gonna see other werewolves and you give them each other a wink and a thumbs up and you know you're the werewolves. That's the game. You are werewolves trying to take down the village. The villagers, they're just trying to guess who the werewolves are. Now, each one of these characters, each one of these hidden characters will have different things they can do. Perhaps maybe a character can change a few other characters around. So all of a sudden you were, were a werewolf, then someone else, maybe the drunk or someone's changed all your stuff around and maybe you're not the werewolf anymore. At the end of the round, you're trying to pinpoint who those werewolves are. It is a lot of fun. One night, ultimate werewolf. And then lastly, the five to 10 player. If you can get a big party going, the resistance is great. Now, the resistance, as it says, you are the resistance. And again, exactly like Inside Job, someone has infiltrated you. You're against a corrupt government and someone has infiltrated your ranks. Now, in the resistance, you're gonna be going through missions and the same sort of thing. You're trying to win your missions for the resistance while the bad people, you know, the corrupt government who's infiltrated you, they're also trying to win missions. And you've got a certain amount of missions you're trying to fill, very similar, but this is just raucous fun. If you can get a big group, eight to 10 people, this is the best game, the best night you're gonna have. So there's four deduction and social deduction games. Association games truly are the ultimate party game. That's because these are as beginner friendly as you can possibly get. You either have pictures or you have words that you're trying to associate with those other pictures or words. The first example I have for you is probably the best example and this is Disney Dixit. Now Dixit is a franchise with multiple different versions of Dixit, but the Disney one has stunning, beautiful illustrations. What we have here is a series of cards. And as the storyteller, you're gonna select one of these cards and you're gonna give a one word clue to everyone around the table who's gonna try and guess your card. But you want your clue to be fairly specific, but not totally specific, because if everyone guesses your card, well, unfortunately you lose. So you want it to be a good clue, but not the best possible clue. And that's gonna be very similar to a lot of these association games. So Disney digs it. Next one I have is very similar, pun intended, because I have 
Similo. Now this is Similo Animals, but again, another franchise with multiple different Similos. We also have beautiful illustrated cards, but this time what we're trying to do is we're trying to get people to guess our card, but we're going to be doing it via our card is different or our card is similar. And you're going to play it over five rounds, trying to narrow it down until people guess your card. So they're picture association games. Now we've got word association games, and this is probably the most famous of all of them. We have code names. Now in code names, you're going to have a five by five grid of these named cards. And these are your spies out there in the field. They've all got code names and you've got certain half of them that are going to be your spies. The other half are going to be the other person's spies, but then there's also all going to be one assassin. And you're trying to give clues to your partner because you're going to be working in pairs and you want to give your clue as, I guess, as broad as possible because you want them to guess as many of your spies on their turn, but you don't want it to be too broad that they're going to be guessing the other person's spies or even the assassin. Now, code names comes in pictures, you've got the extra, extra large version, you've got like Simpsons version, there's so many different versions of code names, but again, it's just such a simple word game that everyone knows and loves. And lastly, my last suggestion is the chameleon. Now, the chameleon is absolutely brilliant. And what we have here is another word game, and we're gonna roll some dice, and those dice are then gonna give us a certain word on here. So depending on what that word is, we're gonna have maybe say comedy. Cool, so now what I'm gonna try and do is, I know it's it's comedy, old mate over there knows it's comedy, old mate over there knows it's comedy, but old mate over there is the chameleon and doesn't know what the word is. So we're all looking at this, three of us know what it is, one person doesn't, and we're gonna go around giving clues, but the problem is when it gets around to the chameleon, they're like, um, um, hat? Like, they won't know what it is, so they're trying to listen to everyone else's clues to try and figure out what this word is in real quick time. The chameleon is absolutely brilliant, it's beautiful, and possibly my favorite party game at the moment. So perhaps pictures and words aren't for you. How about these two different association ideas? We have a wavelength. Wavelength is a spectrum wheel, and you're gonna rotate it around, and it's gonna be an arc based on the left to the right based on the categories you give. So in this example, I have on the right hand side, difficult to use, on the left hand side, easy to use, Excellent. Now all you've got to do is give them a clue to guess exactly where you want them to guess. It seems so simple on the spectrum. Love it. The other option we have for you is how about a colour association? Hues and cues, anyone? Next up we have dexterity. But before you run away and go, no, that's not what I want at my party, hear me out on these two options. So traditionally dexterity are games like Twister, maybe games like Jenga. Look, or if you're like me and your povo and can't afford the real Jenga, you have Jumbling Tower, the nondescript, non-copyright version that's definitely not Jenga. But look, I've got two great options, and the first one is Neko Jima. Now, hopefully, you, hopefully you're gonna start hearing about this soon. It's a very new game, hot on the market, and look, I'm really excited for this. What we have here is a series of wooden poles attached with ropes, and those ropes are gonna be different colors, different lengths. Now on your turn, you're gonna draw out a cube which is gonna tell you what color uh, ropes you're gonna to have to have, and it's also gonna be rolling some dice which is gonna tell you what color quadrant you can put your poles on. Now this just gets madness and madness as you start putting these out, because here's the catch. None of those poles can touch anything else, none of those wires can touch anything else, and you're also gonna try and dangle some cats there and keep them upright and not touching anything else. It is absolutely insane. As you keep going up and up, you're trying to make sure that nothing touches. Millimeter perfect Nekajima. Absolutely love it. The second suggestion here, I'm thinking about tournament play. I'm thinking about tournament play of a game of cat and mouse. So this is an exploding kittens game. And what we have here is we are basically flicking balls back and forth. And they've got to go through this little cat head. What we're also going to have is the cat's going to have some teeth, which are also balls, which you're trying to knock off. It's also going to have a black nose, which is also a ball, which you're trying to knock off. But you're flicking these back with a little cat's paw, which is magnetically attached. It's absolutely brilliant. You've got to trust me on this. This is so much fun. Set this up in tournament play in your party, and you are going to have the best night. So there's a game of cat and mouth, Nekajima. That is dexterity. That is how you're supposed to do it. So you have that friend who is annoyingly talented at drawing. Just don't invite them over for the next category because we have the drawing category here and I'm gonna kick us off with Telestrations. Now Telestrations is an absolute classic and the very best example of a drawing party game. What we have is dry erase sketchbooks. 
Now, on your turn, you're gonna get a word, and you're gonna write the word down, and then you're gonna draw it on the next page. Cool, we now do an awful drawing, we pass it to the next person. They're gonna guess what that awful drawing is, then it's gonna pass it on to the next person, who's then gonna draw that word, who's then gonna pass it to the next person, who will try and guess that word, then draw, then guess, and it's just hilarity because the worse the drawer you are, the better and more fun this game is. The illustration's so good. I've got the 12 player party pack. So if you have 11 other friends, I certainly don't have 11, but if you have 11 other friends, that party pack's great. The other one I have here is Cranium. Now Cranium has been around for such a long time, but there's a reason why these games have become staples in a lot of families, because Cranium is just so unique. Yeah, there's a drawing element to this, but there's lots of other elements. I think on the back, it says it the best. Here's a few examples of what you could do on a round of Cranium. We could, can we make a sound like a rainforest? Can we perform glass blowing? Sculpt a taco or draw a motorcycle with our eyes closed. Just lots of fun mini games. And these two really are the best examples in this particular category. Word party games. The one that's gonna to come to your mind is Scrabble. Now I've got Aussie Scrabble here, but it's still Scrabble. So if you take nothing else away from this video, I want you to understand there is a better version of Scrabble. And that version is Alliterati. Literati. This is a cooperative survival word game. Now, what are we? We're librarians trying to save the world's books from the evil illiterati who are trying to burn all of the books. We have a whole bunch of letter tiles and we have some books here which we're trying to match words of those categories. So we're trying to make as many words as we can with a timer and that timer's gone down real quick. It's frantic action. We can share some letters with other people around the table just madness and this is the best word toll game out there the next category is trivia and i don't actually have a recommendation for you because i have yet to see a trivia game that is different and unique enough that i would recommend but in my household i do have pub trivia and i've got harry potter trivial pursuit look they're fun just whatever trivia category works for you just go at it can't go wrong as long as you have the right audience and the last category, I've just called adult games and drinking games because these are the games I actually enjoy the most when I'm maybe having a few daddy juices at night. Exploding Kittens is the first one on that list. Again, a lot more fun if you may have had a beverage or two. Cars Against Humanity. Now, this really is the game that pretty much epitomizes what I'm talking about here. This game can be risque, can be naughty, and it can be a lot of fun. So Cars Against Humanity, but the last recommendation, I had to think a little bit outside the box for this one. I thought about Long Shot the Dice Game. Now, Long Shot the Dice Game involves gambling and horse racing, so this probably fits into the adult theme a little bit more, but this is a lot of fun where you're gambling on these horses going around, but there's so much more to it. It's a roll and write, but with such a unique and great theme. So there's all of my recommendations. Whether it's a family gathering or a friend's night in, party games remind us of the joy of human connection and that value of spending quality time with others.